Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected one, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. Do you feel that the black woman is the most disrespected person in America? I do. Yes. Yes, I do believe that. Yes. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I can see how that's true. Yeah. I can argue that, yeah. Actually, I don't. Uh -huh. I don't think that we're any more unprotected than black men. So as a whole, yes, I think we are. But women specifically, black women, no. I can think of several because I think African Americans and I think the Hispanic community and the Jewish community are very disrespected. And I think we all have sections that we deal with problems more than others. But women on the whole are disrespected, very much so. We are seen to be protectors in a lot of instances and you know, we're not always in the right state of mind to be protectors and then, you know, we do our job and then we're dismissed a lot of times. So I feel like um, it's not always a, I don't know, welcoming environment for the black woman, especially um, in America, because, um, you know, the most dangerous man in America is the black man. And then, you know, we're seen as, you know, their partner. So it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. We are the ones that, you know, the slave master would see and go, oh, okay, well, you know, you are, um, I'm fetishizing you, I'm, you are an object of sexual affection, but then cast aside. And when the child was born, cast the child aside too. We kind of have been the inconvenient truth of the nation, like the, the way, the nation knows that it needs us. It just doesn't want us to. Being black in America hasn't always been historically great anyway, so if you're a woman and you're black, that just adds to the equation of, you know, lack of respect or lack thereof, or, um, you know, just be part and all that kind of stuff. I don't think we get to be ourselves in an environment because there's a a stereotype place on us that if we are ourselves then oh they're ghetto they're ratchet they're unprofessional when really it's not that we're being unprofessional it's just harder for us to be ourselves like if I get upset in the workplace and I voice my opinion it's gonna be viewed as oh she's a stereotypical black woman versus if the same if a white woman were to do the same thing it would be Oh, well, she's just voicing her opinion. They may not like it, but she won't get called ghetto or ratchet. It may have a lot to do, I would say it starts with the home. It, it seems like a lot of men want a strong and assertive black woman until she is assertive in other areas outside of like the family structure, then she's considered to be either angry or too loud. I definitely will say there's an angry black woman stereotype. Oh yeah, that you always get the, you should smile, you should smile more <laughs> thing, yeah, definitely. People come up to me, oh, they always like, oh, I thought you were so mean, but then once they get to know me, you know, but you're so nice, and it's like, okay. Like when people see me, they think I'm ghetto, or like, I, I'm automatically like from the hood or something, but I'm actually like super quiet, and I don't really talk much, and I'm not loud at all. If I'm in a situation where somebody has disrespected me over and over, uh, you know, call me out my name, done anything, and then I decide not to react aggressively, but just to have a reaction, it's, oh, she's an angry black woman. It's like, hey, wait a minute. The same way that you have an opinion, the same way that you have a voice, I do too. No matter what, a black woman can't have the same emotions as other people without it being like this 
attitude type of deal. Like, you know, my girl Serena out here getting cheated for real. She's emotional about that and she's being depicted as a damn monkey and stuff because of it. Like, I can't get mad even when it's okay for me to be mad. A lot of times, if you say an angry black woman, that might be the woman who's had to bear the brunt of being the sole breadwinner for her family, not getting the help that she needs. That might contribute to that, uh, but a lot of times anger is not really, it's maybe confused with frustration. Wouldn't you be angry if you came home, you had to not take care of your kids first, take care of somebody else's kids first, but then you're also not given the respect that's due because you ran their household and you still got home and took care of your kids and took care of your house, but you weren't respected at the level that you should have been respected. You're just as intelligent, maybe even more, because you're able to handle more. And, and we were taught, basically, a black woman, very strong, because you have to be. You have to teach your kids, your black men specifically, how to behave in an area where they're going to be disrespected. So there are times you have to teach your son to walk away because you want your son to come home. So we automatically become very strong people and we don't have time to play with other people about things that they think are not that important. It's important that you're honest and that you get to the meat of what you're trying to talk about because your kids' lives might depend on it. So yeah, you may think I'm angry, I'm just honest. As far as like what a black man could do, I mean, as we, we can just help up with. I know the music could be a little different. That's a thing. Stop calling us bitches out. <laughs> Stop rapping about us. It's like, okay, look, if you're gonna embrace the beauty that we have, embrace it. Don't one say you like, oh, I don't like light skinned girls. I don't like dark. Like, nah, if you like black women, then you like us all. Speak up more. And like, yeah, speak up for and not just care about equal rights for themselves, but for women too. I hear that a lot with black men that, you know, black women don't support them that much. But I don't, you know, when you flip that over, that could, same thing could be said, you know. So we need to support just like they do. So I would say that would be the number one thing that they could do is support us in whatever, you know, whatever that we do. Like they expect the same support from us. What is the best thing about being a black woman? Oh my God, so listen, it's so crazy. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, girl, you fly. <laughs> like, girl, like, if I had the choice to choose, I still would be me. To you, what is the best thing about being a black woman? Hmm, there are a lot of things. Um, the Some of the best things about being a black woman is our strength, uh, because I believe that you have to be a strong woman. That we never give up, we never quit and we always see, we teach hope to our kids. So even if it's a little, not a great day, to me, the strength that we have is everything. This access to strength and power and sisterhood, I would say just having access to that is like one of the best things about being a black woman. Just like that interconnectivity, the, similarities that you have with your fellow queens about different things that other groups won't understand. I would say that's, yeah, powerful.